I don't know the boy. I've seen him walk in and out of here. But, uh, it couldn't have been aborted, man. I mean, really, it couldn't have. I took me a shower and I come back in here and I looked out the window and there's a police officer out there, the young cop that shot him. And he told him like six, I'd say probably six times to put the gun down. And we opened the door and was looking out the front door and uh, the guy just started walking towards the cop, hitting his chest and uh, he was shooting, he was waving the gun towards the girl and towards the cop and the cop said, put that gun down. And when he said that, and he, that was it, he popped. And I seen the guy, his hand jerked and he just hit the ground. In reviewing the video, uh, it is uh, pretty much textbook training that he exhibited. Uh, also, we're using the car cam, and all of his commands are on uh, the video. I told him the gun wasn't real, and it wasn't loaded, and it didn't work. I mean, I understand that the officer didn't know the situation that he was coming into, and he panicked. But there could have been other ways that he could have did it besides just shooting him and taking his life. He could have tased him, he could have shot him in a knee, he could have shot him in a hand. And now I have to go home and tell us something that he'll never see his dad again. When you come to work, you need to be mentally prepared uh, to defend yourself, or as important, defend others. So I think officers are mentally prepared to do that. This officer was. He did not want to do it, but he was mentally prepared. And it was obvious in that the training that he had had was he, he reverted directly to his training and it's pretty much a textbook case of the policy and protocols that we train officers to uh, use in those situations he did that